We're here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're at Volvo Reman Technologies. We're gonna see how they breathe new life in the old components like engines, and transmissions. We're gonna talk about sustainability. Uh, what are the benefits, the potential benefits and opportunities uh, that come from the remanufacturing process? How does it all add up to a more sustainable product? Let's go check it out. This is a core. This is how they come back yep. after being exchanged out of a vehicle. It's seen its first life. The customer would have taken it to a dealership. They would have given it a look, said, there, it's, there, kinda, it's given up the ghost. We yeah, need to send it a, back. Yeah, some type of performance or wear out issue. Right. And then it'll be determined that it needs to be switched out. Right. And they'll order a reman engine. Okay. Pull this out of the chassis, reman engine goes in. And through our, you know, our dealer will turn it to the core hub and the core hub will drop it off here. This is where it begins the remanufacturing process. Well, and from a customer point of view, this was the last time I saw it. I need to get that truck back on the road. I'm happy with the truck. It's working well. I just need basically a new heart, right? I need a heart transplant for the engine. So this is the last time I saw it and we're gonna see what comes out the other side once it goes through the reman process, right? Exactly. Yeah, this is, this is the beginning of that process and you'll, we'll take you through it from, uh, from beginning to end. Okay. So these items here are gonna go, they're set up to go to the oven to be baked. Okay. So everything goes and gets, uh, you know, at high temperature. So high temperature cleaning, baking, of uh, major castings. Okay. So the major castings will come into these ovens overnight. You've seen everything get disassembled, Great. cleaned, and then this is where it comes into this uh, pressurized room where we do all of our machining and requalification of the major castings. Okay. You can see here what well, we've got crankshafts that have either been ground or polished. All right. We're doing the same thing on camshafts, polishing them preparing them to yeah. go into um, kitting and then assembly. Right, right. It's amazing how quickly they start looking like newer and newer component. I mean, you know, stark contrast from over there, the tear down, and then already over here, it's starting to look really good. Right, well, this, and this is real, you know, these are all critical components or castings that need to be uh, dressed properly right. and, and prepared to go into a, a remanufactured engine. You can kind of see here, things kind of lose their identity. And that's where it's really stressed, where we have to measure and make sure we meet the specifications before remanufacturing the replacement engine. Oh, sure. See here what we're pushing in, new bushings, and then we'll machine them. So 100%, these are kind of like 100% activities mm -hmm. that we do to every one of these castings. So you're cutting it to specification so yeah. it can be requalified. Yeah. So I'd already cut this one right here. It's 40, 40 cleave, 34, 434, right there. There was check up on the wire. The wires have, have to they go with the crew so right. That's just what I'm cutting back. That will teach the wire and it sinks down to the right. Yeah. So these are these are um, these are kind of things that not just everybody can do. Right. That only the factory can do. Meet the specifications and bring it back to specification, basically. Surface. We're machining, polishing, or or grind. You know, doing different types of machining operations. I mean, yep. you can see the the gasket surface here. Yep. You can see the surface here cleaned up. Yep. So that um, so we'll get good performance. The first counter of this just to see if it's right. I mean, if there's any burrs or anything in there, it's right there. That's right. Rice is smooth. No. Then, but I. It's, it's two prongs right here, right here. They just measured it, the size of it. Right here's going to be a little big because they're not full. So yeah, like that's three, 3.7 thousandths big. We're shooting for, uh, it matches a thousand. So you go down through all the mains. So you have a range. Yeah. You have to meet that range. If yeah. it's not in that range, then it's not acceptable. Yeah, and then we have to repair it. Which okay. it, usually, if they're, they're not uh, big, we don't imagine big is that they're not torque. And if they're small, we can pressure hood them with the tool, which I did earlier, so that it'll 
it'll fit small and we'll just take material out and make it bigger about the saws and usually if they're big like that then there's usually uh junk under the caps so we'll take it off clean it off polish it a little bit and then we'll put the cap back on retorque it usually it'll usually measure pretty good that's the craftsmanship piece. Yeah, for sure. This is the before, right? Yeah, right. Before, before you clean up, yeah. that's what, because that's all nice and shiny and yeah. the, the Fresh gauging, right, right. Go so ahead. now we're in assembly, right? Just right. Because we're in teardown and machining. Machining, and now we're in assembly. Right. And we mentioned that, you know, we have this kitting. This is where the kitting occurs for the jobs. Right. So there'll be kit carts uh, and yes. major okay. castings, and they'll flow to the block line to be, to begin the assembly process. Okay. So there'll be a mix of new parts, you know, mandatory 100% replacement. I see, okay. The 50% replacement will need some some new ingoing parts, yep. but hopefully we're trying to yield as much of the, of the old part as we can. I see. But this is where it all kind of merges together. I see, interesting. So there's new part content along with castings and reuse content I all see. coming together here. And they'll, they'll pull the block, put it on the line. You've got crankshafts. Right. You got flywheel housings, everything you need to dress out the engine. You're uh, torquing the the crank caps, main caps, main caps. So there's a torque sequence. You know, it's all regulated. So not to the scale of Hagerstown, mm -hmm. but the same specifications have I to be see. met. Their specs are what are written into our remanufacturing right. technical regulations. So we're using the same torque specs. Yeah. Um, the same finish specs, things like that, that have to be met to qualify it for remanufacturing. You can see the flow of parts. Certain parts are new, certain parts are reused, polished. We have remanufactured injectors. This is all part of what goes into the, the finished product. These are the 100% replacement parts, the, the uh, bearing shells for the camshaft. Gear train's been installed, cylinder head's been placed, putting on some initial fitting lube. So you can see the, the cleanliness and the care, um, following a process, the repeatability. Right. All those things are great factors of, of why a factory manufactured engine is superior to anything else. Yeah, the preciseness of the process. Uh, it's surprising, you know, like you said, it feels very much like uh, like new component manufacturing, much more hands-on here. Uh, but yeah, the, the standardization of processes and the precision is impressive. So we got all the all the running gear at the top, all assembled. So for a three-quarter engine, this is yeah. this is the end of the line, okay. and there'll be a final test. Uh, it's a, called a pressure decay test. And that's where we'll check the pressure, we'll pressurize the engine and look for any type of uh, leaks or any kind of issues that may uh, have cro cropped up through assembly. It's just an added security measure that we do to, to make sure we've got a, a well-assembled engine that's tight. Right. And what's the production mix with a 3 4 engine and a 7 8 engine? Which one are you doing more of? Um, we're doing about, probably about two-thirds of our production is three-quarters and okay. about a third is seven-eighths. Okay, okay. Now, as, as time goes on, we want to kind of flip that sure. and have more seven-eighths sure. be two-thirds of our production. That's all part of our uh, moving to a second shift and things like that. Right. So this is final assembly on the, on the seven-eighths. So, Josh, this is what's left to go on the engine, right? Yes, sir. So you can kind of see how it's all developed yeah. and flowed. Right. And he's dressing it out to its 7 8 status. And these are the items that are left to assemble and dress the engine out. Right. So you can see it's, it's very, very complete. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. Turbocharger intake, oil filters, oil filter housing, fuel filter, oil filter. Yeah. Right. And you said moving to more 7 8 it's more of a complete drop-in replacement is that is that a trend because of the complexity of the engines and or, or what would what would push more well, seven seven eights production or the need for that it, it's really a customer preference okay um again it, with a seven eights it's available we can get a truck up and running a lot faster i see um another another benefit is that you know 
if somebody were overhauling an engine at a dealership, you need an A-level technician. To install a 7 8 engine, you need a B or C level tech. Oh, I see, okay. So it's, it's not as, uh, um, it's a much easier yeah, uh, installation. Easier. Yeah. And with the technician shortage and all that, all those challenges as well, being able to have more availability of technicians install the engine, like you said, get you up and running faster and right. a little easier to get that process. Well, through. the bay the bay throughput on a 7 8 is superior than, than having to dress out a, a three quarter engine. Sure. So again, that uptime thing. Sure. Uh, the quality of the product because it's been Tino tested. Right. Um, oh, that's, that's right. Another different. You're dyno testing those. You're not dyno testing the three uh, three quarter engine. Correct. Right. 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 On the three quarters engine, since this one's dyno tested, you know what the operational uh, capacities are. You're sure it's up to spec. That mm -hmm. one you don't know until you're running it. I mean, would they test that? Would there be tests they run through a three quarter engine, or would they just install it and yeah, they it they, they would dress it out. They put it in the chassis. They you know that would be a startup. Yep. is in chassis and then a road test. Okay, interesting, interesting. Just nice to kind of get the dyno specifications of peace of mind of that just at that level yeah you yeah. know oh it's it's definitely uh we we catch anything right uh, that, that that needs to be caught in this type of uh arrangement right and you can kind of tr control the build a little better too it's, and exactly it's to total, total control to it. total control we we have our engine queue for the dyno Okay, so these are that's what this is. These are all lined up, ready to go testing for the dyno. Right. Okay. So all these engines here have to pass through the dyno. And then once they do that, they go to paint and finish. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll go take a look okay. here. Yeah, a already bit. looking night and day versus where you start, right? Yeah, I mean you look. I mean this is very, yeah, very high quality. Right. It's very complete, and we're you know we don't have a starter. Um, it doesn't have the alternator, doesn't have the uh, fan drive. Right. These are basically all it's missing. So this one's getting prepped right before paint. So we use an uh, environmentally friendly water-based paint. So then this is where this is where it all comes together. It looks great. Yeah, this is a finished three-quarter on its way out, either to a PDC or to a customer. Do you have an idea? Start to finish, and now three quarters would be different than the seventh eight. The seven eighths. So obviously, this one's done quicker than the seven eighths done. But do you have a, a flow? If we, you know, if it was a day from there to there. Do you do you know how long then it takes to go from start to finish? Once I'd give you a rough. I mean, it's going to fluctuate depending on the build and sure. and ingoing parts, especially supply chain. But it can be uh, a rush job. Can be as quick as a week. Okay. And it, it maybe up to t you know three weeks. Okay. Just kind of dependent on certain in, yeah, in going parts or whatever the situation may be. Yeah, still, that's amazing to get uh, you know this level of quality engine back into the field, back into a customer's hands. Right. It looks great. Hey, well, this was great. Learned a ton. Engines look great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for taking us around. Yeah, thanks for coming. We like to showcase our ability to remanufacture quality product. Yeah, they look great. Thanks again. All right.